Hey everyone, Joe here. Welcome to part 14 of the Pro Tools First Pro course. We're going to be talking about the plugins today that are included in Pro Tools First. So 23 plugins are included at time of recording, and that's a lot less than some of the premium doors, but it still has everything you need to get started with mixing. So in this video, I'm going to do a rundown of the 10 plugins that I find most useful that I think you'll probably be using the most. I'll be going over what they can do and I'll be giving you some tips on how to get the most out of them. So just a heads up, the selection of plugins included in Pro Tools First is likely to change. These 23 plugins is what's included in Pro Tools First at the moment. Also, all of these plugins that, you, that are included are gonna be useful in different situations for your audio. It's not like number one is the best and you shouldn't use the other ones. They're all gonna be used in different scenarios. These 10 are just the ones that I would, I would say are worth getting to grips with as soon as possible because they're most likely to be used uh, as you edit and mix your audio and so on. And a lot of these in, in this, ten, this top 10 list are plugins that I still use today, even um, with the full version of Pro Tools and having access to a lot of other plugins as well. So number 10 is Dither. Now this plugin has only one function and that is when you're bouncing uh, a track down a song or a podcast or anything, if you're bouncing it down to a lower bit rate than it's been recorded in, so for example, if we've got 24-bit files and we're bouncing it down to a 16-bit MP3 to upload to a host, podcast host, for example, you should be adding dither on your master or on a mix bus before it reaches your master. It adds a level of inaudible noise that prevents um, artifacts and, and issues that you can get from exporting to a lower bit rate than that which your audio files are in. So it's really simple, but it is essential. Number nine is the time adjuster. It's in the delay menu in your plugins menu. What it does is just uh, delays the, the audio um, or the MIDI on, on your track by a certain amount of samples. And also, it gives us a nice little gain knob here as well. And this, this is, these are both useful for different reasons. The time adjuster, if you wanna move something, shift something along if it's out of time and don't wanna to have to move around the audio, um, you can just use the time de adjuster to delay it by a few samples, especially if you've recorded something with two mics, like a acoustic guitar or a snare drum. One of the mics, the signal might be occurring very slightly earlier, just a few samples earlier than the other mic, and it can cause phasing issues and things. So you can use the time adjuster to adjust the time so that they match up. Also, you've got a, a gain knob in there that gives you minus 24 or plus 24 dB, which can be useful for all sorts of things. And number eight, we have the Mod Delay 3. It's a delay plugin. It allows you to put delay effects on your audio. It's quite simple in the way it sounds, the delay, but it is quite feature packed. It lets you sync the delays to your tempo. Um, you can change the lengths and types of your delay. There are a huge amount of presets available, um, different sort of interesting uh, sound effects. It's, it works in stereo, so you can, chain, you can have a different delay on one side than on the other. And it's got a built-in low pass filter, which is helpful just for cutting off some of the highs to give it more of a sort of analogy kind of kind of sound. Then at number seven, we have RX7. There are a few of the RX7 audio isotope audio suite tools uh, that come for free with Pro Tools first, which is really great that they included those. You'll be using these from the audio suite. If you go into audio suite and go to noise reduction, you've got D-click, D-clip, D-hum and D-noise, and they're pretty self-explanatory. They can really help to clean up uh, bad recordings. So for example, we've got the D-click open at the moment. So where you've got sort of clicks, uh, whether that's from a bad edit or just someone clicking their mouth, something like that, that can't be cut out. You can highlight it and click render. And then it's going to reduce the harshness of, of that click. Ah. And then the voice denoise plugin is just so useful. If you have a noisy recording, for example, you can hear on this recording and you can see it as well. We've got a little bit of background noise. So when you highlight... Uh, a section of dialogue or a section of audio, 
You can change how um, how harsh you want it. You can optimize it for dialogue. If we render that, you can even see before even listening. And a busy one for you. That noise is almost gone. It works similarly to if you've used the denoising audacity, but this one has more more features and is generally just more effective. And then at number six, we have Expand 2. It's a MIDI instrument, but it's got hundreds and hundreds of instruments. It's got pads, pianos, uh, percussions, everything you need to put a song together. Some of the instruments sound better than others, like there's some nice sounding pads and things. Emulations of acoustic instruments like acoustic guitar and things, they're just never gonna sound as, as good. Um, but again, to this day, I still use some of the pads in this. So you can see here, I've got four tracks, all with Expand on, just with some drums and piano. And it can work really well for composing. So just putting some ideas together. It's got everything there so you can put your bass and then you can replace them with, with real instruments after potentially. And you'll have heard a little bit of reverb on the piano and the drums there. That's our number five, that is D-verb. Um, so it's just a simple reverb plugin, but it sounds really good. And again, it's still one that I, I do use from time to time. Um, you can set different a few different styles, hall, church, plate. You can change the size, the length of decay, and there are some EQ and, and pre-delay options. It's simple to use, but it does genuinely sound really great. I do like the plate on, on vocals. Then at number four, we've got the expander uh, slash gate. A gate is a really important tool to have at your disposal. It's sort of like the opposite of a compressor where when something's going below a certain threshold, it's reducing the level or, or muting it completely rather than when it goes over the threshold, it's increasing the level. But it's really useful for all sorts of things. You can use it to cut the tail short of a reverb. You can use it to reduce noise or, or cut the audio between somebody speaking. It's just a simple to use gate but it's something that you will likely use a lot if you're gonna be mixing. At number three, we have the de -esser. Now what this plugin does is it works similarly to a compressor, but it's only affecting high frequencies, which means when you've got a, a vocal track where you've got a lot of sibilance, some really harsh S and sh sounds, you can use the de to reduce those. Let's have a listen. Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz. Today, I'm really excited to be joined by Harry Thornton, who is the director of Global. So you can hear with those t and s sounds, it's kicking in and just making them a little bit less harsh. You can also uh, list, You can also put it in listen mode so you can hear exactly um, which sounds it's affecting. Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz. It's an essential plugin for almost any vocal recording. And then the last two, you can probably guess what they're gonna be. At number two, we've got the compressor limiter. Whatever you're mixing, a compressor is gonna come in handy to reduce um, the level of the, the loudest parts of your audio, smooth things out. It's just an essential plugin for when you're mixing anything. And the one that comes with Pro Tools first is perfectly usable for anything you're going to be mixing. Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz. Today, I'm really excited to be joined by Harry Thornton, who is the director of Global Sales at... It's also got a side chain function, um, which is great for a free compressor that lets you uh, activate the compressor with another track. So for example, um, if you're mixing music and you have a kick and a bass, you could have the bass side chain to the kick. So whenever the kick comes in, it's reducing the level of the bass, tighten things up to keep the bass frequencies from becoming overwhelming. It's just a really useful compressor. Um, you can also use it as a limiter. There are a bunch of presets available. I don't tend to use the presets, but you can create your own as well. Um, and you can use it when you're mastering to, it's not a brick wall limiter, unfortunately, but it does keep the, keep the levels in check. And then finally, we've got the EQ7. It's just a really useful seven band EQ um, that lets you shape your tone how you want it. It's got a high pass filter and a low pass filter. It's got input and output controls, and it's got five floating uh, band pass filters that you can adjust how you need them. I've got a bunch of EQs in the, the full version of Pro Tools, but I still do find myself using the seven band from time to time just because it's quick and simple 
and has pretty much um, as, as many filters as you need for most situations. If you're mixing audio in Pro Tools first, you'll definitely be using at least some of these plugins. Um, that's not to say that you, you won't need the other ones as well, and it really depends on the situation. But the stuff that is included in Pro Tools first is definitely good enough to get a professional result over. And then if you do consider upgrading in the future to another version, maybe buying some third-party plugins as well, the skills that you've learned using plugins included in Pro Tools first will be transferable. Tomorrow, the final part of this course will be up on YouTube, or if you're watching later on, you can just click on the link in the playlist on the screen. I'm gonna be sharing with you some materials and other training, other resources that will help you to continue your learning further. So hit that subscribe button and the bell icon if you haven't already to be notified when that final video is up. And let me know in the comments section below what plugin have you found yourself using the most in Pro Tools first. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in part 15.